Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sun Asiana, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King in a phenomenal El Clasico matchup, Good vs Evil, Elves vs Mordor, before further ado, let's get it started. We are on the beautiful map Erin Lear Edit, at the bottom side of the map we have the blue Mordor player Sauron and he's facing against the red Elven player May Shadow Fax at the top side. Erin Lear Edit is a pretty small map, it looks like that. We have um, work layers at the left side but also at the right side and we have also two troll layers around this area and also around this area, they are both protecting those signal fires. I think it's a difficult matchup for the Mordor faction, especially early mid game, later on Mordor is of course very very strong. But I like this map a lot, because it's very unique. Uh, normally on a map like this you have fights all the time since you can't really avoid fighting, again because the map is quite small. Uh, two Malone trees into the barracks, into the third Malone tree is gonna be the build order from May Shadow Fax, and Sauron on the other side is building two slaughterhouses, Orc Pit into the third slaughterhouse right after. And he will be also building up the second Orc Pit as well, because Orcs are very cheap units in both terms, command points but also resource wise, they are the cheapest units in the game actually, they cost only 80 resources and 30 command points. On the other side, Mei Shadow Fax is gonna recruit some pikemen. I'm assuming his goal early on is gonna be cre uh, to creep this work layer potentially, also maybe this work layer. In total we have 4 work layers on this map and 2 troll layers. Even though it's quite a small map, but we have still decent amount of creeps on this map. And Mei Shadow Fax is now building up his second barracks right after. On the other side we see as the third production building the Haradrim Palace coming up for Sauron the model player. I'm, ass I'm assuming he's gonna try to get some Haradrim lancers on the field and will be using them for harassment, for pressure, but also for defense against the Lorien warriors on and also against the Lorien archers. Two barracks against two orc pits and the Haradrim palace. But it looks like he's gonna get some Easterlings first, those are the pikeman units from the Moro faction and he might be using them to creep this war player right after. And yeah, indeed, Mei Shadow Fax is creeping, that's gonna cause those pikemen to hit level 2. He's gonna also get some decent amount of money from the creep. And also power points, of course. Talking about power points, Mei Shadow Fax hasn't picked anything just yet from the spellbook of the Elven faction, but Sauron, the model player, is starting with the Great Eye of Sauron. That actually makes a lot of sense, because his name is Sauron at the end of the day. <laughs> I mean, of course, he has to pick the Eye of Sauron, right? He's gonna use those Oryx uh, for defense. The idea behind this one is he's gonna use them as a way of a um, body blocking unit. He's gonna keep them in front of the slaughterhouses. And body blocking is a big thing in Rise of the Witch King, so you can't just go over the units. That's not possible. Very nice move here from Mishado Fax. It also looks like that he's being the on host player, which is gonna give him, of course, a big advantage. Boss advantage in Battle for Middle Earth games actually qu means quite a lot. Because you will be having much faster reaction time for the units. And he's creeping a lot, like really a lot. We have one creep only for Sauron, but in total three creeps now for the Alvin player. He was also able to get all the money from the creep, which is very nice. And he's even gonna creep the second troll layer right after. So Mishiro Fax is playing it kinda slow, but look at the force that we got on the fields now. We have a lot of Oryx, and by the way, if you don't know, the Oryx, they have also the Horde Bonus. And when gathered in numbers of 100 or more, they will be passively dealing 25% more damage, which is always stacking. With that being said, you can make your Oryx, even though they are very weak, very strong. Okay, the plan here is Mordo wants to survive the early game and we have some, you know, archers on the field, pikemen on the field and by the way this map is not bad for the elven faction because elven units are able to get invisible around the trees. But the Miflons, the pikemen, they are not able to get invisible anymore and if you guys wanna try out the patch we are using right now and also we will be using for the world championship, you can download the version simply in our discord and try it out yourself. Because the World Championship is all about to begin, it's gonna be the greatest tournament of all time for Rise of the Witch King, it will include 128 players from many many different countries and also a cash prize of $2000. And I would love to meet you guys also in the live streams as the 
WCS games, the World Champion game, World Championship games are gonna be all broadcasted on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link is also of, of course in the description down below. Okay, so Morty is putting some counter pressure. I was used, I is giving you leadership. Nice clumping here in between the rocks. The uh, Malone tree is gonna get bursted down. Clumping, if you don't know what it means, means pretty much nothing else. Uh, then the units are clumping against a building, and with that, they are all able to attack. Because unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1, you can see in Rise of the Witch King, the battalion size is much more, right? We have many more units in a battalion, unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1. And when you right click on a building, it might not uh, cause them all attack at the same time, but this is for example a perfect example of clumping. You can see every single orc unit from the battalion is able to attack. And if you can manage that, you will be able to burst down the buildings in no time, but the trample is incoming. Beautiful trample against the Lorian archers, but just in time Major of Hex is switching to the old crown stance. That's gonna make them survive, because otherwise they would get one-shotted. The battle stances in Rise of the Witch King and in Battle for Middle-earth 2 are very important. This Malone tree has been taken down as well. And during all this time, the model player Sauron is untouched. He hasn't uh, gotten any damage, I think, from the Alvin player. He has right now 550 command points available, but those Lara houses are untouched. They are all about tweet level 2. And resource buildings in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King are very important. If you can keep them protected, they're gonna hit level 2. That's gonna increase your money income. But also the building is gonna get tankier. It's gonna give you 75 command points instead of 50. And once those buildings are gonna hit level 3, they will all act like a tower. They will be able to shoot. They will be much tankier. And also, they will, um, you know... Yeah, they will be defending themselves pretty much, which is very nice, because this way, for example, the model player can send out one orc, and the one orc can't take down a Malone tree level 3 anymore, because the level 3 Malone tree is going to be able to protect itself. Okay, beautiful. So this one is going to be taken down as well. A lot of pressure from the model player on the Alvin player measure of X. One trample is incoming, but it's a bad trample. He's going to lose a lot of these lenses, unfortunately, and losing lenses is going to give your opponent too many power points. That's why the Alvin player has already 11 power points collected in total. He's going to go for the Alvin wood and use it here, which is very risky because Mordor can just use the Tainted Land and cover this one, as you could see yourself. And the thing is that the Mordor Tainted Land is going to cost Mordor Faction only 5 power points, while the Alvin Wood from the Alvin Faction is going to cost you 10 power points. Yeah, of course, the Alvin Wood has lower cooldown than the Tainted Land, but still. Other options would be, of course, the Mist. The Mist is actually nice because it's, it's a permanent debuff in an area. And this way you can make the enemy units much, much weaker and take them down this way also way, way easier. Nice counter attack from Major of Hacks. I will be used to buff those Oryx to make them deal more damage. But it's not gonna be enough to save the Slaughterhouse. It's gonna be definitely taken down. And there is another force from the Alvin player Major of Hacks. And also this one is gonna get bursted down in a second. Siege works coming up now for the Mortar player. Because if you don't know guys, if you are struggling against Elves, the Siege weapons are the best answer. Like you wanna get your Siege works to level 2 and get some catapults on the field. And catapults are very, very hard, but also annoying to deal with for the Alvin players. Because they won't have the chance and the army to get through all your units to take down your catapults. And the archers, which is the main force of the Alvin faction, are not going to be able to hurt your catapults. Because the archers, they are doing almost no damage to the siege weapons. Okay, so we have Warchan, Tainted Land and I from the Spellbook of Mordor. 575 command points collected. On the other side, Mishod of X has 600 command points collected in total. And he has 5 power points collected after the Elvin Wood, Rallying Call. But do you see the positioning, guys? How many arches he has? In a situation like this, Mouth of Sauron would be awesome. Oh, Corsairs with the fire bombs on the ground! Holy moly, look at this damage. Heal is gonna be used from Major of X. Trample is incoming from the Revenge Lenses, but everything is getting burned down. It's a horrible situation. If he can attack this area, because the Corsairs with the fire bombs are gonna leave fire on the ground, and this fire is gonna deal damage over time. Look at this, look at this, look at this. The Alvin army is burning alive, ladies and gentlemen. They are burning alive. And Corsairs are so underrated in this game, but yet they are so strong. 
And it's a perfect proof why you should never underestimate the Corsairs of the Mordor faction, guys. Elves, they like to clump. Elves, they like to camp. And Corsairs are anti-camp. They want... They will punish you big time if you are staying on the same spot all the time. What is the casual way of the Alvin playstyle? But he was still able to win this fight because he has so many archers on the field. Now even land some lances coming from the stable level 1. He has double barracks, triple barracks actually guys to keep up with the spam all the time. He has also well. Which is of course a big advantage against the evil factions because you will have sustain. The evil faction doesn't have that. Temple is incoming. Nice one, but here's some Easter links around. Yeah, he's getting punished. And once again, losing Lancers is going to give your opponent a lot of power points. There is a tower to protect this pathway. Siegeworks is, of course, still level 1. We have 3 Orc Pits in total. And uh, Haradrim Palace level 2. And that's pretty much it. No heroes on the field just yet. There is Gollum lurking around. And killing Gollum is going to drop down the one ring. And capturing this one ring. Is gonna give the evil factions the chance to recruit no one less and no one else than the Dark Lord Sauron himself. While the good factions like Elven Faction, Men of the West and Dwarves get the chance to recruit the mighty Galadriel. Okay, so you can see Elvenwood is almost back up, but Tainted Land is gonna be still on cooldown. You can see the cooldown differences. Mordor can of course go for the industry from the spellbook once he has 10 power points collected. That's gonna help Mordor quite a lot. I will be used. It's a massive Mordor army right there. And orcs, yeah, I mean, uh, you know me. I always say quality goes over quantity, but there, you know, the thing is, losing orcs doesn't matter that much for the Mordor faction because once again, they are the cheapest units by far. They cost only 80 resources. And he's still able to deal decent amount of damage and keeping the Elven player also quite busy. He has army here, but once again, you can see the weaknesses of the Elven army yourself, right? He has only two pikemen and the other units are always archers, and archers are dealing almost no damage against buildings in Rise of the Witch King. So what's the plan here? Maybe Hydra could be a nice choice, but it looks like Mishiro Fax wants to get some ends on the field from the end mood. Treebeard, the protector of the Fangon Forest and his end friends are gonna try to siege the Mordor faction. And actually this is finally getting to level 2. We have one catapult on the field but Mordor is getting now the siege works to level 3. That's gonna give him the chance to recruit some of the Black Riders. Which are the elite! Boo! Nice shot! Holy moly! Hitting like a truck. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I mean, it's not about the, about the damage you are dealing, but it's about the disabling effect. Because you are knocking down every single unit on the ground, and this is going to cause them to not be able to move or attack for several seconds. But he needs to get some Easter links on the field as soon as possible. 625, 650 command points now for Mordor. He has in industry being used on this Lora House in the front side, which is level 3. He's getting a lot of money now. There is another tower coming up to keep this Lora House protected. And moved into the tree beard himself. So we're gonna have the daddy of the Fangon Forest joining the battlefield very, very soon for Mission of X. There is a tower coming up as well, just why not? To have some extra protection, which makes sense. And tower is also a beautiful hit once again. Tower is also a nice protection possibility against the Alvin faction. Because once again, their damage against buildings isn't the greatest. Alvin Wood is on the ground, Alvin, Gu Alvin Wood from the Alvin faction gives you the same stats like the Rallying Call, 50% more damage and 50% more armor, but on top of that, you also get Fear Resistant, which can be very useful against Mordor. Siegeworks is level 3, we are getting some Black Riders on the field, you are only able to get one of them on the field at the same time. And they are like a mini hero, because keep in mind that every normal unit in Rise of the Witch King is able to level up from level 1 until level 5. The exception are the heroes. They are able to level up from level 1 to level 10. And also the mini heroes. In this case, for example, those Black Riders they are also able to level up from level 1 to level 10. Even though there are actually no heroes. Tribute is on the field. And same goes, of course, to the Nolder Warriors. Nolder Warriors are also the special units from the Elven faction. Just like the Black Riders from the Mordor faction. Tribit is a nice hero, but I think you will need some support for um, more ends. The... Armory is coming up now for the Alvin player, that's gonna give him the chance to get the Silvertone arrows, the heavy armor, the forge plates, but also the Benekeri upgrades later on from the Siege, uh, from the, not Siege Works, from the Armory. 
Tribute and all the other ants, by the way, are very vulnerable against fire. So Main Shadow Fax has to be careful with his tribute because the catapult can hurt him quite a lot. But look his damage against buildings, do you see that? I mean, he's the siege weapon after, after all, you know? But look at this now. Boom, you see the damage. And sometimes they are burning those ants, including Treebeard, and that's gonna cause them to take damage over time. There are some units lurking around, but they can't really do much. They can potentially kill this builder if Major of X is paying attention, but it looks like the builder is gonna get away. Uh, looks like you wanna kill Treebeard. Oh, nice burst. I mean, in unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1, in Rise of the Witch King, the ants are very vulnerable against Easterlings, against pikemen. In BFME 1, for example, <laughs> you know, the pikemen can't do anything against ants. The only way you can deal with them are either heroes or fire. That's it. But in Rise of the Witch King, the monsters, ants, trolls, even Muma kills are very vulnerable against pikemen. That's why pikemen in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King are much, much better than in Battle for Middle Earth 1, in which they are only a counter to the horses, to the cavalry units. Okay, we have a hero now, finally, from the Moro faction, and his name is Gothmog, the leader of the Orcs. He has leadership from level 1, but only and exclusively for the Orc units, Orcs, Orc Archers, and Black Orcs. If also Haldir on the field now. Haldir is a nice hero, actually, against Mordor, because Mordor has no fear resistance until Gothmog gets level 5. That's the only possible way. And Haldir can get level 8, and he will have the Golden Arrow, which is something like a small cloud break, and gonna stun the enemy units for several seconds. Colum is still lurking around, we have more ants coming now, he is not reviving his Tribiot because Tribiot, you know, is much more expensive than a normal regular ant, so please keep that in mind. Okay, so what's the plan here? He's gonna use the Black, Ri Black Riders for harassment, they are level 2 now, they have also the Dread Visage, which is gonna be a passive permanent debuff as long as the units are nearby. However, unlike, mo you know, there are some different types of debuffs in the game. Uh, you know, for example, cave pets from the Goblin faction or Kribin from Isengard are able to debuff the enemy units, and on top of that, they are also able to nullify their leadership bonuses. Oh, the cutter shot! Nice! Once again! Okay, the cavalry is coming, but all Mordor really has to do is keep this catapult protected, and that's it. But Haldir is drawing the sword, he's going inside the jeans, but he's sacrificing his life for one single catapult. But it looks like he will be actually able to get away. Where are the Black Riders from Minitam? Gothmog is lurking around this side, doing actually nothing. He has to be extremely careful, he's very low. The siege continues, the level 3 slaughterhouse is getting targeted. This one is gonna be taken down, that's a cloud break from the Alvin player by the way. He has even collected 10 power points on top of that. So he's, ready, he's really getting closer and closer for the power spike with the flood of the spellbook of the Alvin faction. On the other side we have Arrow Volley! Erole! Holy volley! That was a beautiful, beautiful, juicy Erole against the Alvin army, but you know, the fight isn't over yet. The end has been taken down. The Black Riders are putting in so much work. And by the way, they are also a great counter to the enemy heroes, like for example, Haldir. Okay, so the fire on the ground from the Erole is not friendly fire. So you can still. When you are using arrow volley, you can still go on top, on top of the fire yourself, it's not gonna affect you. Black Riders are chasing down enemy calf. Haldir is full HP, so he should be fine. He's almost level 4, level 5 is gonna unlock his leadership, which is, by the way, very effective. And super underrated, leadership is always nice, because unlike the buff, it's permanent from a hero. They are level 4 almost, and the only possible way, I mean, there are a few options actually for the Moro faction to nullify your leadership. One of them is Mouth of Sauron with the Doubt ability, which is an active debuff, unlike the Dread Visage from the Black Riders, which is a, which is a passive debuff. And also the Witch King of Mordor is nullifying the enemy leadership bonuses easily. Look at their damage with Gothmog together. Gothmog is level 4 now. Level 5 is gonna give you the Iron Hand, which is the fear resistant for the nearby allied units. 625 command points, look at the money from the model player, do you see that? He has over 2500 resources collected already, that's pretty nice. We have Mirk Boots on the field as the best archers of the game. Mordor is on the counter attack. 3000 resources collected for the Mordor faction. On the other side, we have 875 command points available for Major of X. 
Armory is level 2. Level 3 is needed for the Silverton Arrows, which is gonna hit, you know, make your Mirk Woods hit like an absolute truck. And he has 15 power points collected. It means he's only 10 power points away from the Flood. Or from the uh, Sun Flare, which can also be nice against the Mordor army. It can one-shot, for example, those Black Riders. Okay. Armory level 3, however, gonna cost you also 750. The upgrade is gonna cost you 1000, so it's not cheap at all. And it looks like he doesn't have that much money. And he's also getting the end summon. I don't like about I don't like this. Like, if you are 10 power points away from the flat, flat is so nice. You don't wanna miss that, you know? Flat is, I would aim for the flat because I don't think he has the chance to kill this fortress any soon when there are catapults around. Uh, Mord on the other side has 12 power points collected. 15 is gonna be needed for the worm summon. Worm can be nice against the barracks level 2, for example, against the end mood, you can kill those buildings in no time. And towers, they don't actually hurt the worm that much when they don't have the silver tone arrow, arrow purchase. One more cutter shot, and that's Fiesta. This is absolute Fiesta. Cutters are doing such a nice work. And remember what I was saying at the beginning of the game, that's one of the easiest way to deal with the elf infection, because they will struggle. Trust me on that one, they will struggle to kill your catapults. 700 command points available for Mordor. And 875 command points available for the Elven player Mishiro effects. Look how many buildings he has. Imagine... <laughs> imagine Reign of Fire or the Balrog summon in a spot like this. That would be awesome. We come from Mirkwood. And summon is available. He's gonna use them now with the Mirkwoods and Hydeer almost level 5 for the leadership. Rallying Call is available. Heal is available for Mishiro effects. The siege has begun. Mordor has uh, no heavy armor, no forge plates purchased. He has not that many catapults on the field either. He has only one catapult as far as I can see. Haradrim Palace is still level 2. Maybe some uh, Haradrim Arches could be a nice choice. But I'm expecting a big hero, potentially even the Witch King himself, very soon from the fortress. The Skate is gonna be taken down. Nice attack from Major of from downtown. The slaughterhouses are getting bullied and destroyed by those ants. And Mordor's... Oh, yes, the Witch King. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen. No man can kill me. And yeah, but that's not true. That might be the truth in Middle-earth, but that's Battle for Middle-earth games. And, you know, it would be kind of OP. Imagine that. <laughs> if no man... I mean, not every faction is including uh, Eowyn. But he can get dismounted. He can also switch weapons. And he has splash damage. With, this, with the weapon he has in his hands right now, he has splash damage. You will see what I mean once he gets the chance to attack. But it looks like he doesn't want to attack. Boom. Doesn't deal too much damage to the ends. He should, he should not bother, you know, killing them. He should kill the pikemen and the black riders could kill then this ends afterwards. But they don't need to be killed. Because they are gone. They, are, they were from the summon so they are not permanent. Alright. And once again, Witch King has one of the best debuffs in the game. Because unlike all the other debuffs, Witch King is able to, you know, debuff you even more than that. There he is, with level 2, he will have the Dread, Vis the Dread Wrath, which is gonna make the enemy units lose 33% damage. So normal debuff is gonna make them only lose 25, as you can see. So you lose 8% um, more damage, which is very significant, that's more than a quarter, that's more, yeah, like a third of your damage you are losing. The Worm Summon, by the way, in the meantime, and this is gonna be taken down very easily, very nicely. You have uh, even heavy armor purchase on this review and lenses, but attacking the tower is gonna make you lose a lot of time. In this, uh, instead, you can always try to kill the end mood, but it looks like the worm is gonna be taken down anyway. But he was still able to destroy the barracks level two, which means no more mid woods any soon. For the Alvin player, make sure of X. And keep in mind that upgrade from barracks level one to level two for the Alvin faction means you need to invest one thousand resources, which is quite a lot. Witch King is level 2 now, he's also not getting mounted on his Felbys, because remember, when he's mounted on the Felbys, he's not gonna be able to apply the debuff anymore. So please keep that in mind. And you will see his splash damage whenever you see that, how many units he's able to hit at the same time with this, uh, with this mace weapon he has in his hands. But he's attacking extremely slow. I mean, I like the fact that you can choose, you know, you can choose with the sword or with the mace. I think you need to have the maze, um, the sword for the Morgul Blade, if I'm not mistaken. You have level 5 units. Level 5. And level 5 in Rise of the Witch King means a lot. 
Why you asking? Glad you asking. Because level 5 is gonna give you also auto meet automatic, automatically fear resistant. So, level, you know, level 5 units are not gonna be affected from the Golden Arrow, for example, from Haldir, or from the Cloud Break of the Faction Elves of the Spellbook. Once you are level 5, you have fear resistant automatically. So, keeping those Black Riders alive is gonna be very important now for Sauron, the model player, at the bottom side of the map, Erin Lear. And of course, the Alvin armor is gonna make them quite tanky, so they don't take too much damage anymore from these towers, and Mordor isn't able to put any archers inside the towers, unlike almost every other faction in the game. The elves have need Witch King doesn't care. <laughs> Witch King is extremely tanky. And in the worst case scenario, he can get mounted on his Felbies and he's out. But look at this now, ladies and gentlemen. Pew! Do you see that? How many units he's killing? What is it? I mean, at the end of the day, this guy costs you 5,000 resources. That's a lot of cash. Barracks is level 2 now, that's great. 13 power points collected for the Elven player. We have right now 8 power points collected after the Tainted Land. <laughs> what is happening with this dude? <laughs> after the Tainted Land, Warchant, Eye of Sauron, Arrow Volley, Industry, the and the Awakened oh, Worm. So he is still 17 power points away from his own 25. And Elves are at 14 power points, nearly at 14 power points after the end summon, Cloud Break, which is available, Elven Wood, which, which is available, Heal and Rallying Call, those are available right now as well. Okay, so it's a back and forth game, uh, kind of slowed down a bit. Mordor has now finally a Haradrim Palace level 3. He has even a second Haradrim Palace and a second Siege Works um, because he lost the Siege Works in the front side, which was level 3. Which is very bad. This way you can't even get any more catapults on the field. Remember, Siege Works has to be level 2 for you to be able to recruit some catapults. Do they have Silver Thorns? Yes, they do have Silver Thorns. And that's gonna make them shoot like a truck. Hit like a truck, I mean. <laughs> Alright, so debuff, level almost 4. We have a level almost 5 Gothmog, which is gonna be very important against the Cloud Break. You will see what I mean once um, Gothmog is nearby. And he's level 5, Cloud Break is gonna become absolutely useless. Oh, Silver Thorns, they hurt, they hurt. You know, they have also this little knockback damage. So you can't really approach against the Mirkuts anymore. You see that? Every unit is getting bullied. Uh, Gothmog, of course, is gonna be a bit tankier, as well as Witch King. Witch King has a. Oh, nice arrow volley once again. And we gotta keep an eye on Witch King. And they are level 5. Remember what I was saying? Level 5 is gonna give you fear resistance. Witch King is leveling up like crazy. Hitting like an absolute track, hitting extremely hard and hitting multiple units at the same time. I mean, uh, he needs to be still careful, there are still a lot of elves around and looks like he won't be making it out from this situation. He getting mounted wouldn't help either because uh, as a fell beast, he will get uh, damage peak time. <laughs> but he's gonna get mounted anyway, just fly away. Oh, be careful with the... F oh, he lost the Black Riders, didn't he? Yeah, he lost the Black Riders, I believe. That's very unfortunate. And the Alvin player was able to win this fight. We have a level 6 Hydra now. He has leadership. Witch King has to be careful. Always use Hold Crayon Stance if you, don't, your, if you don't want your units to attack automatically. 18 power points collected. Oh, that's a bad war chant. Uh, because black orcs, they are orcs, and they can always get trampled down by these lancers, so he was just wasting his war chant for no reason. But the good thing is, the Mordor player has come, some great defense, you know? And without really a lot of ends, it's hard for the Elven player to break through this defense. Because once again, his army is based on archers and on units to keep those archers protected. The only reason why he has pikemen is to keep those archers alive. That's it. So Witch King was able to survive, Kofmok was able to survive, that's not bad. Maybe some more katas could be nice for the Mordor player. Does he have money? The answer is yeah. He has not, I mean, he's not rich or something, you know? He's of course investing a lot of money into the units all the time because he keeps losing them all the time. The problem here is for the, for the Mordor player Sauron, that elves later on with the silver thorns are unmatched. You can't fight them army against army. That's why you need catapults. You need. That's the only possible way you can win this matchup. Uh, the mirk boots with silver thorns are unmatched. No one can out damage them really. 15 power points collected, 10 power points away from the 25. And the elves, they are only 5 power points away from the 25, which can be 
either flat or the sun flare. I think flat is better, because look at the layout now, you can use flat from this area and you can kill the siege warriors, the Haradrim palace level 3, the slaughterhouse level 3, it can be nice. Building supplies are here. Alright, so Haldir is level almost 7 if I'm not mistaken, now he's level 6, uh, level 8 is gonna unlock his golden arrow which is another stun. And I don't like the fact that Sauron is going forward with only one catapult, you know? Get some more catapults I believe, is the better choice, we have also Haradrim archers on the fields now, the elite archers from the Moro faction, with the barbed arrow shot. And also silver thorns are gonna hurt this catapult much much more. Witch King, hit them Witch King. Uh, they have also heavy armor, you know, a nice catch here with the flank of the Mirkwoods and the catapult has been taken down, that's why you don't go for the attack with only one single catapult. That's not gonna achieve too much for you. The Alvin Wood, he can cover this one if he wants to, he has Tainted Land. 17 power points collected, Industry is almost back up, Eye is available but Warchan is on cooldown. He's gonna finally cover this land. Even the Black Riders, look how much damage they have, look the blue arrows, pew 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 from downtown, they have so much range too. What is Witch King doing? He's trying to get into the lanes, you gotta keep an eye on Witch King and he's hitting like a truck, but in the meantime the army is getting crashed. I mean, that's the only word I can think of in a situation like this, even black, black riders are getting bullied very hard. But Witch King is very tanky, however, he is now the focus and Rallying Call is gonna be used to make the unit stronger, the black riders are riding it down, the Witch King is running for his life to be able to get away. Level 1 black riders, they can't recover over time, that's a sun flare! But it looks like Witch King and uh, Gothmog are gonna be able to survive, the sun flare was kinda useless and wasted big time didn't kill anything but the Black Riders. To be honest, I'm also surprised because I was expecting a bit more damage against the Witch King, but Witch King was extremely tanky and that's a 25 power points from Major of X, which was just wasted. And Mordor is now only 1.5 power points away from his own 25. I mean 2.5, sorry. Yeah, and also this Witch King is getting a lot of levels, he has level 6 now, the Screech is gonna be available, but remember the Alvin Wood is also giving the you fear resistance, which means again you are also resistant against the Screech from the Witch King. Worm is available for the big fight, but if he chooses to summon Balrog, you will see what I mean, like Balrog is kinda useless against Elves, because when they have Silver Thorns, they can kill Balrog in no time. But we will see later on, hopefully. Rain of Fire might be a better choice against Elves, especially in this at this stage of the game when they have Mirk Woods with Silver Tone Arrows. 24 power points collected from Mordor, level 8 is gonna unlock your Hour of the Witch King, which is not very good in a situation like this, it's not the best you know, ability in the game. Nice hit though, the splash damage is crazy. 25, he's gonna go for the Rain of Fire indeed, let's see where and when he's gonna use it. Major of X is gonna use his lances for harassment, he's gonna try to deal economical damage to Sauron and his mortal faction. Worm is available, he's gonna use Eye to get vision I'm assuming? No? Where is Eye? Am I blind? I don't wanna miss that really, I don't wanna miss the Rain of Fire from the mortal player, from the mortal player Sauron, I would love to see that can also summon the Worm, but ideally you wanna use Rain of Fire here, you see how many buildings and units are around this side? It would be awesome. <laughs> Imagine you kill all the wells, the barracks, and the stable, and with one single hit. That would be the dream, but of course he doesn't see what we see. He has no vision around this side. I mean you can always use the Eye of Sauron to get vision. Same for the Alvin faction for example, you can always use the Foresight from the Alvin spellbook to also get vision. I was used around this side, okay, Siege Works is level 2, he has also a level 3 Siege Works here, Black Riders are on their way, Mordor is not using his Reign of Fire just yet. And we have also Elrond on the field, right, yeah, Elrond, also known as Agent Smith. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, <laughs> alright, the Catapult is gonna be taken down, the power points are rising to the sky, this guy is very strong, he's tanky, but he has no HP scaling unlike the Witch King of Engmar. The Witch King of Mordor is always 6000 HP from level 1 until level 10. Fire purchase on this Haradrim Archers, that's pretty nice. That's gonna make them deal a lot of damage against those ants. 
Eldrond is a great sportive hero from the Alvin faction, also quite expensive, gives you leadership with level 1. I mean, of course, the Alvin faction doesn't need that, because he has hide it anyway. But this way you can maybe make two armies, you know? The one army can be lead by Haldir and the other one can be spotted by Elrond. This way you have always leadership on every stage and in every area of the map, which can be pretty nice. Arrow Volley is coming in clutch now for the... Where is he using it? He was using Arrow Volley. I don't know where he was using it, maybe in the middle of the map. Yeah, he was using it here. Uh, he was killing a couple of units, but nothing too crazy. Worm is available now for a long time, and you know, I, I don't like the fact that Sauron is not using those abilities. Cloudbreak is gonna be used now, which is gonna stun the enemy units, of course. And the Rain of Fire, ladies and gentlemen! And of course, the ants are getting one shotted, but many of these units were still able to survive. So that's a bad Rain of Fire, just like the Sunflare from the Alvin faction. It could be used much, much better. Like, imagine it being used here against the buildings. And then you can use the worm right after to keep killing and destroying the uh, buildings, you know? At this stage of the game, killing the enemy units is not very impactful if you don't have any follow-up. Like, you kill enemy units, but you have no units yourself to punish them. So he has enough time to build army again, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to kill or use abilities on the units, like Rain on Fire or the Sun Flare, you want to make sure that you have an army yourself. After killing the enemy units, you can actually push and try to deal some damage. But in both situations, players were using it just to defend and kill a really small group of units. Aldir is gonna be taken down by the Nazgûls. Witch King is now level 7, he was using the Morgul Blade. Once again, you can't use this um, when you are mounted. And I think you can't also use this one if you are using the Maze. You know? Look at this. Um, Toggle Sword for faster attack rate and bonus damage against heroes enables Morgul Bleed. Yeah. And your abilities are adapted. So if you are using the maze, you will have Screech here. If you are using the sword, you will have the Morgul Bleed. Or Morgul, Morgul Corruption, sorry. It's something sm similar to the cripple ability from the... <laughs> yeah, the Worm. The Worm was summoned, but it's gone. <laughs> I mean, too much damage now. Uh, too many archers and the worm can't withstand this much damage. Elves, they have the best defense in the game, army-wise. They have so many archers and towers with the laser shots, you know, very strong. Okay, so that's a back and forth game. I can't really tell who's gonna win this one. I think Mordor is making a big mistake, but Elven player is also making a lot of mistakes. It feels like that Elves, they're gonna get the 25 faster. And Flood is nice. And once again, this is one of the matchups in which the Balrog summon is not gonna be that impactful. Okata shots are incoming! Nice shot into the backline, I like that. I really do. And by the way, if you kill somebody who is, cor uh, who is uh, affected by the Morgul, Morgul Corruption, he will turn into a white. And this white, this white will fight for you. <laughs> fight for me, white. And the ends once again are very vulnerable against fire. But they can shoot from a really long distance. They can shoot from this side. We have also lenses on the field. I like the way that the Alvin player is always putting pressure. Very nice. Like riders, they need to be careful. There are some pikemen around from Major of X. I will not leave and Smooth. Barax level 2 is still alive, barely. One hit away from getting from killed. Hildred is back in the business. Level 7. Cutter shots are incoming once again, but into the back nine would be awesome. He has now finally a couple of more cutters on the field, which is gonna be his win condition, definitely. Witch King is taking down or taking care of this end. No big deal. Black Rider was able to survive. He's level 3. That means he's gonna respawn over time, which is really good and important. And look at the shots. What's, what? I think he was using arrow volley against the cutters. Yeah, he was using arrow volley against the cutters, and the fire on the ground is dealing a lot of damage to them. Haldir is, uh, I mean, Elrond is running for his life. Haldir is also here. Kill the catapult. He has enough archers to kill this catapult in time, trust me. But it looks like he doesn't need to. Look at the range, do you see that? They can shoot from downtown. And Mordor is struggling to break through the lines of the Elven defense. That's very hard. So ideally what you want to do is you want to get a lot of Easterlings on the field and even maybe give them armor, you know? Now you have a level 3 siege works, you can just buy armor from this one. 
So this way you can make the Easterlings tankier. This way they can also tank more damage from the Silverton Aero upgraded uh, Mirkwood Archers. And then you have also Haradrim Archers potentially for the, for the you know, damage output and also to protect your catapults against the units from the Elven faction. The One Ring. Is he gonna capture this one? The answer is yeah. He's, does he have money though? I guess not. You know, look at this. Look at this. Will we see Galadriel in this one? It would be awesome. <laughs> Because think about it, uh, the ring heroes in Rise of the Witch King, they don't cost you any command points, right? And the Elven player's command points kept right now. That means he can't recruit any more units. And he can just simply save money now. Of course, the Galadriel is going to cost you 10,000 resources, which is not cheap by all means. But he has already collected 4,000. And he can't invest the money elsewhere anyway. So I think there is a high chance that we might be able to see Galadriel in this game. And I would love to see that. I don't know how the Elven faction can deal with that. I don't know if this one is going to affect him. Look at this. Target enemies, special ability timers are reset to just... Look at this! Barbed arrow shot. That is the Witch King once again. I want to show you guys the Witch King's Hour of the Witch King. Look, target enemy special ability timers are reset to just used. Units near the Witch King suffer uncontrollable, uncontrollable fear. And I'm actually curious if this is gonna work also against Galadriel. For example, you use against Galadriel and all her abilities are going on cooldown. Would be awesome. Oh, beautiful once again, the arrow volleys. <laughs> the arrow volleys are MVP this game, trust me. Darkness is awaitable. He's, you know, he knows, you know, going for the Balrog doesn't mean too much in this matchup because you can only use it to kill units, really. You can summon it here to kill units from the summon. Look, look him. The Witch King of Mordor, no man can kill me. Look at the Scatterpulse, they're also getting killed in a couple of seconds from this Silverton Arrow upgraded Midwood Archers, they are very strong. And once again, we have also Mouth of Sauron on the field, but once again, um, Major of X, the Elven player has the host advantage. Host advantage means a lot in this game. I mean, what are you doing, Elrond? You are tanky, but you are not that tanky. Witch King can kill you in no time. He, has, he ca can just switch the weapon and use the Morgul Corruption against you. This way you can't even move away anymore. Be careful. Do we have Flood? No. Uh, because he was going... I believe he was going for the Arrow Volley, that's why. So Flood, still 15 power points away from the uh, for the Elven player made Shadow Facts in this game. It's a nice game, right? By the way, guys, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, on this video and also subscribe for more content like this. This channel is dedicated to Battle for Middle Earth games and like mentioned at the beginning of the video we are currently hosting a World Championship 2021 for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King which has a cash prize of $2,000 and 128 players from all around the world are participating as well. And all these games are going to be broadcasted on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. And once again, I would really love to meet you also in our live streams. The link for the Twitch link is going to be in the description down below. And 1000 command points. He's going for Galadriel indeed. <laughs> Look his money. He has over 9,000 over 9, as Son Goku would like to say. Or, or as Vegeta would like to say. What is his power level? It's over 9,000. Sunflare should be up very very soon, in about 10 seconds, maybe even less than that. Very nice and great defense, like very great defense. Very hard to break through for the model player Sauron against the Alvin defense. Very strong defense. He has also the upgrades on the Fortress, that's gonna make the Fortress tankier. Increase the hit points, gives, gives you more HP on the Fortress, makes it harder to be taken down. And the upgrade he has right now is also giving Mordor the chance to get the Gorgoroth's Fire Fireball upgrade. Which is also very nice against units or buildings. But uh, it won't, I don't think it can reach from this side to this side. I don't think so. That would be kind of crazy if, if, if it could, you know what I'm saying? So Elrond is level 4. Elrond is also not bad. Elrond has foresight. He has the Attila strong for the heal, for the self-sustain, also for the sustain of the nearby allied heroes around him. And then he has also Restoration, which means he can use abilities once again, after using them. And last but not least, with level 7, he has the Whirlwind, which is similar to the Whirlwind from uh, Galadriel, for example. Sunflay is available. The Black Riders are, of course, tanky units. They don't die that fast. Witch King is level 9. Not that, it, not that it matters, actually. 
And summon for a sneaky attack. Uh, okay, he was using Foresight, I believe. Oh, the Sun Flare beat! And that's a great Sun Flare. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You see the fire on the ground? Deals constantly damage to the buildings and everything is getting killed over and over again. He lost a lot of units. He lost also a lot of buildings. That's how you want to use your 25 power points from the spellbook. And if this is not enough, Galadriel is on her way. <laughs> Galadriel is on her way, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm curious. And I'm looking forward to see Mordor dealing with the Elven Queen herself. I would love to see that. Level 4, uh, Elrond. I'm actually curious because I don't know. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section down below. Does Atelas work also for Galadriel? Can you heal up Galadriel with Atelas of Elrond, for example, you know? Oh, the sun. That was a nice animation from the Hour of the Witch King. Uncontrollable fear, by the way. They are getting all stunned. But now it's on a cooldown. Oh, no. It's on cooldown now, guys. And I wanted to see that against Galadriel, but I think Galadriel is going to be there very soon. We have also 21 power points collected for the album player Misha of X. Massive army. This, uh, the Reign of Fire is still on cooldown. He has 22 power points collected. He's still 3 power points away from getting his Balrog summon. Witch King has to be careful. Pew, 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 pew. From downtown, the laser shots are coming in clutch. I want to keep an eye on the Fortress because we know. We know who is going to be there very, very soon. The power points are rising to the sky, but Flat is going to be available very soon as well. Yeah, he has already the power points he needs for the Flat. The Worm Summon defensively. Nice Worm Summon, actually. What's happening here? Alvin Wood can be covered from the Tainted Land. It's available. 26 power points collected. Flat is available, but also Balrog Summon is available. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. She looks mad to me. Look at the picture. It's the Alvin queen but we see flood what a fiesta game the witch king has been taken down he has been washed away from this land that's mouth of sauron only the balrog summon is available i, I want to see balrog against Kaladiel. do me. it <laughs> i want to see that you know what i'm saying i've never seen this before i like this game gorgorov spire fireball is coming in clash for the motor player as well but he's killing only his own buildings the whirlwind galadriel who is committing against the fortress the Balrog summon being used offensively. Now he's being used defensively around the bottom right side. I think he's gonna try to use Balrog against Galadriel. I wanna see that. But what is happening there? Okay, let's see. Show match. Balrog of Morgoth against the Elven Queen, Galadriel herself. Balrog is strong, but is he strong enough to take care of the Elven Queen? Breathfire will find out the answer. She is so tanky. She's a ring hero at the end of the day. She costs 10,000, but I believe Balrog is still a slightly stronger. He can use the fire rip once again. Pew! It's not dealing too much damage. Actually, she is killing Balrog very fast. That's a rain of fire, but Galadriel... I mean, he's gonna kill his own Balrog with the rain of fire, but Galadriel is gonna survive, and that's it. He knows he can't win this game anymore. Galadriel is literally invincible, and that's the game. There we go. The beautiful Elven Queen Galadriel was the MVP at the end of the day. And she was the win condition for the Elven player May Shadow of X. GG. Well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Hopefully we can get maybe 500 likes on this video. It would be awesome. i see you guys next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.